Welcome to Detective Night, where people all over the country, instead of worrying about crime, can do something about it. In the next 45 minutes, you can affect the outcome of serious cases, including one that now has 13 police forces combining their resources. There are some crimes that just don't work in the United Kingdom, and kidnapping is one of them. It's somehow just not British. And when it does happen, it almost never succeeds. But not everybody seems to understand that. Last month, a gang abducted the girlfriend of a bank manager in Aylesbury in Buckinghamshire on Friday, the 26th of June, the day of the England-Columbia match. They were hoping to coerce the bank into paying a large ransom. It didn't work. It never does. But now you'll hear their voices and see impressions of their faces. Let's find the men involved. You're not going to give any time tonight. No, 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 no. Get out of bed. And shake your head. Ian at breakfast on Mix 96. Look, just make sure it's iron, that's all. I... <laughs> <laughs> hey, when I drove up by the side of them, uh, I noticed that they were intently looking around there, as if they were waiting for something. Look, I'm sorry, this is the residence bay. Can you please move your car a bit down the road? The, the driver had dark hair and dark eyes with a sort of fairly pronounced bone structure. Not as big as the second man. Uh, the battery's dead, mate. We can't move it. Well, you can get out and push it a bit, can't you? The passenger was quite strong and very tall. He had very short hair mousy colour. He was um, lighter in complexion. Yeah, all right, we'll push it down here, right? Bye. Bye. I heard a vehicle draw up, so I glanced out a bathroom window and could see the white van outside. They seemed to fill the space at the top of the stairs, and that moment seemed to stop. Get a carpet. It became quite clear to me they were going to take me away, and that I remember at that time thinking, nobody will know this is happening to me. It was feeling as if I might disappear that day, and that that nobody would know. Morning, Jackie. You all right? All the time I was trying to keep calm. Yolanda August, yeah. your boyfriend's Kevin Paxton. I just kept thinking, just keep calm, because if you, if you let that go, then, you know, you won't be able to deal with this. There's quite a lot of fear about where they were going to take me and what they were going to do with me and I was very worried that I was going to be locked away somewhere and that, that I might be in darkness. I, I was thinking in terms of being shut up for days. Quiet! Kevin does what we tell him when we ring him. He'll be out of here in an hour. Right? What if he doesn't? Then we'll burn you. The thought that they would set fire to the carpet brought on such an attack, and my heart was really pounding. It was like my heart filled that carpet up. Good morning, that was Ben Karen speaking. Come and help you. Could I speak to Kevin Paxton, please? 400. Good morning, Kevin Paxton speaking. Can I help you? Good morning, Mr. Paxton. I am a bank robber. I have your fiancée, Lorna August, in my custody. Now, are you going to do what I ask you to do? Otherwise, we're going to have to burn her. I beg your pardon. I have your, your fiancée, Lorna August. We picked her up from your house 
this morning. I have her in my custody. There's a little task I want you to do for me in order to, for you to get her back safely. All right. I need you not to call the police. All right. We've got some people on scanners. We've got uh, the phone lines from the bank. They're all being monitored. I don't want you to panic. Everything will be fine if you do what I say. And do not tell anyone what you're doing. It don't matter. Your Lorna's life does. Now, I want you, as soon as you come off the phone, to leave the building. Walk straight up Corporation Street. At the top of Corporation Street on the left, there is a bin. In that bin will be a blue bag containing two holdalls. I want you to take those holdalls back into the bank and fill them with money. I don't want any fibers. Tens, twenties and fifties only. How much? I want them full. As soon as you fill them up, I'm only going to give you five minutes. We've got people watching you. We know exactly what you're doing. Okay? I want you to take those bags back up the top of Corporation Street. At the top of Corporation Street, turn left. Keep walking left, and one of my colleagues will pick the bags up from you. Do you completely understand? Yes, yes, I do. Lorna will be perfectly all right if you do what I say. I must emphasize, though, you call the police, that's it. It was like the the bottom had fallen out of my world to know that they'd got her. And I was in this position where it was between a rock and a hard place, really. I'd got to make that phone call. Police, please. The police being involved was going to end this a lot quicker than me complying with what they'd asked for. I heard the van driving off. I started to think they must have gone off to buy some petrol. At that point, I thought, you've got to get out of this. You can't lay here and let this happen to you. That first feeling of fresh air when I pulled my, my head and my shoulders out of the carpet, was, it was like somebody taking the lid off a box. That feeling of rain was just so refreshing after being stuck in that carpet. There was a wait of, I suppose, it was about an hour and 10, 15 minutes when I'd done everything that he'd told me not to do, nothing that he'd asked me to do, knowing full well that they'd got Lorna, and just, well, the worry <laughs> that something is going to happen to her because I've taken that course of action. Um, you just cannot imagine. I was terrified that I would get this far and that they would come after me and there was nobody in and that was like total devastation again. It was just like a, a step backwards in a way. It was a real feeling of absolute relief when I got into the house and uh, once I heard the voice the other end, it was fantastic, really. Anna Harrison, a morning of paralysing fear for Lorna and for, for Kevin, but the whole thing was doomed from the start. It certainly was. In cases like this, the bank always dials 999 immediately. And also, even if they hadn't done this, there was no way that one individual could actually gain access to a large sum of money. So whoever did it doesn't know anything about banking. Um, actually, the odd terminology they used at times. Talk about their colleagues and so forth. Yes, yeah, so he talks about his colleague. He also mentions that Lorna is in his custody. He, he's using terminology that's very much like the police service or the military or perhaps prison service or the security industry. And South East of England accents. Yes, accents from the southeast, and there are local connections. They obviously have local knowledge. They could be from Aylesbury or High Wycombe, but also we have connections to West London. Now, there was a second phone call. We heard the first phone call, which was the ransom demand. A second one was made later. They didn't know, of course, that Lorna had managed to escape. She could have asphyxiated in that carpet, and they made another call to say where she was. Yes, at 20 past 11, they called the bank uh, and gave directions as to where Lorna could be found. Obviously, they, they were fearful that, that some serious damage could have come to her. And because of, of the callous nature of the, this attack, I mean, we, we would say we believe that these people have probably got girlfriends or wives. There must be relatives out there who know who these individuals are. And it's these people that we're appealing to, 
please do come forward and tell us who these people are. Well, do listen to this voice again. It's quite brief, but this is the second phone call. Laura August will be found at Small Dean Lane, past Knapp Hill, about 150 yards up on the left. Now, if people think they might know who that is, you've got a, another, a third EFIT of one of them. Yes, we have two fit EFITs of the same individual. One was compiled by a witness in Hayes, where the mobile phone was bought, and the other was compiled by a witness near to Chadbone Close. Now, the one compiled in Hayes, you think is probably more accurate? Yes, certainly the, the EFIT compiled near to Chadbone Close, the witness wasn't quite so happy with that, so we feel that the one that you're seeing now is probably the more accurate of and, the two. And look at the hairstyle here. Now, if we look at the originals, th this is the chap on the right, he's the, he's the chubby one. He's big, he's over six foot and immensely strong. Yes, he is terribly strong. We know that at one point he was carrying Lorna in the carpet single-handedly and he would need to have been terribly strong to be able to do this. Now, several phone calls were made and, and some of them went to High Wycombe. That's right. Certainly we know that um, there were accomplices in High Wycombe. One was at the, the railway station and was there from about half past nine to a quarter to ten. Uh, and a couple of phone calls w were received and made from this telephone kiosk. Also, we believe that another of the, the team was near where the bank, where the bag was, uh, at the corner of Corporation Street, Castle Street. Now, the van that was used in the abduction had been stolen, a grey yes. van. It had been stolen two weeks before go before, something like that, and must have been parked up some, somewhere. Not distinctive from the outside, but if it had been parked outside your house, you would have recognised it. Now, explain why. That's right. The van was stolen on the 13th of June from the centre of High Wycombe, and although it's got a grey outside, internally it's described as wheel clamp yellow. <laughs> So it is fairly distinctive, uh, and if this, this had been parked in your street, either with an H or a G registration, because it was in fact using false plates, then I'm sure that somebody must have recognised this van. A terrifying crime, and because of that, the bank's put up a very big reward. Yes, the bank are offering up to £15,000 reward for information leading to the arrest and conviction of the offenders. Um, thank you very much indeed. Well, thank there's a lot you. to go on in this uh, reconstruction, and, and all the things Anne's been saying, a lot to recognise, and... Again, she's been saying a £15,000 reward. If you've got any idea who did this, please, you can call us here live in the studio on 0500 600 600, that's a free call, or call the local police on 01 296 396 296. Easy to remember, Aylesbury 396 296. If you saw Crime Watch Update last month, you'll know there was a lot of excitement over several of our cases. There have been nine arrests since then, six as a direct result of viewers' calls. Most of the attention was on that dreadful attack on a Czech student in a train toilet somewhere between Hastings and London, and what might be a linked crime, a rape in Hastings itself. Last week, a man was arrested on suspicion of both offences. Other calls are being followed up, and we'll obviously tell you more when we can. In another case, a police operation happened while we were on air after neighbours identified a man. He's now in custody awaiting trial. On the hijack of a delivery driver, a man gave himself up. And you may remember an intruder who got hit on the head by a householder during a violent burglary. Well, a man has now been charged with both burglary and assault. Now, for nine months, a big drugs inquiry has been running in South London, and we think the driver of this car can help take things further. The car itself was abandoned after an accident some time ago. Do you recognise this man? He's in his mid-twenties with an athletic build and sometimes calls himself Ken. 0500 600 600 or call the local police on 0181 649 2545. That's 0181 649 2545. Who's this at Kingsbury Station, North West London? A passenger or a burglar? Why is he leaving the station by this unorthodox route? He's climbing over a fence that leads to someone's back garden. A short while later and he's back again. Even now he doesn't catch a train, he just walks off. Is it coincidence a house that backs onto the railway was broken into that evening? Gold bars and Indian jewellery were stolen. Our wandering passenger is in his 20s, about 5 foot 10 with fair wavy swept back hair. 0500 600 600 or you can call the incident room direct on 0181 733 3124 that's 0181 733 3124 in west yorkshire there's a big police inquiry going on into an episode detective sphere may be a prelude to a series of very dangerous attacks a few weeks ago the quiet town of dewsbury a woman was abducted and nearly killed i just started running and i never stopped 
Yeah, I just wanted to get well, at least get away from this man, but I wasn't bothered. I was just running. There could have been glass. There could have been anything. I was just going. Yeah, it was a quiet start that night. Um, there were very few people about, but there was one car in particular that had caught me eye that kept circling. It was a, a maroon-coloured Cavalier. It's then that I realised that this driver must be familiar with the town because of the, the little side roads that he was using. He was stocky build, he had a short haircut, flat top, like a rugby player type. I went to the telephone box to see if my children were OK, so I found a babysitter up. Yeah. They're everything. Right. They're my entire world. Bye-bye. I had both arms round my throat and it was really strong. So strong I couldn't move my head. I was scared because I didn't know what was going to happen. And my first thought was just to see if I could get away, but I just couldn't get away from him. I saw it in the, in the back window, uh, waving you know, frantically at me. I thought it very strange you know, that she'd just paid in and now she's going away in a car. Uh, then some more customers came, taxi pulled up, my attention got taken by the clubman. Shut up and lie down in back. The main things I remember about the car is the child seats and the toys, and he had a wedding ring on his finger. After driving around for some time, the man finally took her to a towpath off Raven's Wharf Road next to the River Calder. It's hard to believe he found it by chance. Again, it suggests local knowledge. And I kept telling the man that I had children. Because I thought, we've seen the child seats in the car. He might realise that obviously that was my main concern to go home to my children. But all I could see all the way through was my children's faces. Me. I want to go home to me kids, please. He raped me and tried strangling me again and so I bit him on his arm. <sighs> there was only one way out and that was eight feet down into the darkness. Luckily she landed in the river rather than on the rocks, but the river was cold and filthy. And I thought, I've got to take this chance. It might be the only chance I get. Obviously I didn't like going into the water. But I felt safer once I got there. There are moments when I do feel like just breaking down and giving up. At the moment, I'm trying to be positive and not let anything drag me down. I'm just trying to keep going for the sake of my children. What it might be is somebody Well, Don Harrington, an appalling attack committed by a man capable of serious violence. He tried to kill her, didn't he? Yes, this was a, this was a horrific attack on, on a defenceless woman. And uh, it was an attack of such a nature, when you take everything into consideration, that I would classify this man as a dangerous sex offender. Now, as such, there is always a possibility uh, that uh, he may have tried before. And, and what I would say is, if anybody out there uh, has any inclination of anybody trying to, get a, trying to do something like this to them or at or, uh, approaching them, do get in touch with us straight away. And of course, the fear is he may strike again. Well, that, that is so, but can I say that this is a, a rare offence. I really want to say yeah. that. Uh, but when somebody can do something like this, there is always a chance he can do it again. Now, we and saw a good description of him in the film. Roughly what age do you think he was? Well, I, I think uh, from all I've gathered, he's in, his, he's in his 30s. But in particular, I'd like to mention that he, has, he had a bite on his left forearm just above his wrist. Now, that was when she attacked him that, himself. That, that, that is so. Now, and another peculiarity about him was he committed this offence whilst he was barefoot. Now, once I can't add anything to that, that is quite unique, I think, uh, mm. for that to happen. Uh, he and then, sorry. And then, of course, he, he was also wearing a wedding band. Uh, and 
uh, that takes us into the element of wondering whether he is in fact a married man. Now he may be a married man and that's one line of inquiry but of course uh, there is always a chance that he may have borrowed a car. Mm, the car, of course, which was the maroon or red Vauxhall Cavalier with those child booster seats in That is in so, them. yes. Now, You've got an example there, I have I think. indeed, and it's, it's a particularly good example because the woman has picked this out. Now, the pattern is not the same, but in particular I want to draw people's attention to these four wings that are on here. She definitely says that th this was the case. Now, what I want to say, if somebody's got one of these in the back of the car and if they've lent it to somebody or mm. if they've a partner or somebody else would use it, then do get in touch with it. So there was a booster seat in the back of the car and also in the passenger seat. That is right, yes. There was another booster seat in, in, in the front of the car and of course there was a blind uh, on the window uh, by the rear passenger seat. Well, Don Harrington, a lot of clues to go on there, thank you. A terrible okay. crime and a terrible prospect of this man being a serial offender. If it could be your husband or a friend or relative or anyone you know, please don't leave it to chance. Call us right away. 0500 600 600 or you can ring the incident room free on 0800 318 001 that's 0800 318 001 now two robberies both caught on camera first can you help catch the villains who robbed this filling station at Wendover Buckinghamshire on a Saturday evening in early May one man comes in and says he wants to buy a drink second man hangs around by the door and then a knife appears these are pretty good pictures Who's the knife man? He's in his early to mid-twenties, five foot ten, with hair that's short on top and shaved at the sides. And who's his accomplice who scuffles with the manager and throws him onto the floor? If you've any ideas, 0500 600 600 or call the local police on 01296 396 360. That's Aylesbury 396 360. Now, who would wear something conspicuous to do a robbery? Well, take a look at this man in a Lecoq sportif padded anorak. It's black with yellow sleeves. He's just threatened and robbed a woman at an off-license in Northumbria. Who is he? He's in his late teens or early twenties, about five foot eight, with two missing front teeth. 0500 600 600 or call the incident room on 0191 454 755. That's Newcastle 454 755. We have had something like 50 or 60 calls so far on the Aylesbury abduction where someone was trying to uh, get money out of the bank as a ransom. Nearly all these calls here, about 30 or 40, are pointing out it was probably a BT van. You remember that one with the bright yellow interior sprayed grey on the outside? No more calls on that, please. But we have had large numbers here, one, two, three, four, five, six names that have been given on that case as well. We've also had one name given for the suspected South London drugs dealer. Now, with arrests from Crime Watch running at about roughly one case in three, appeals of a pretty good chance of success. And when a crime isn't solved, well, we like to keep on trying. Despite two appeals so far, a one-man crime wave has continued to terrify people across a growing patch of northern and central England and North Wales. Tonight, we're going to show you everything you need to identify the culprit. It started in September 1996 and now after 29 armed robberies, they're on the lookout for him in building societies all around the country. His method is so primitive it's surprising he's not been caught. A gun in a plastic shopping bag and simple disguises that help him blend into the crowd. First look at his clothes. Two years ago he had a bomber jacket and flat cap. Eighteen months ago he switched to anoraks and a deer stalker. By last summer, as well as Anorax, he had a blue wax jacket and a baseball cap. And this is his major fashion statement for 1998, a dark wool coat and trilby. Why the hats? Well, look at this. Hair at the sides all right, but maybe none on top, with a hairline something like this. As for his glasses, dark frames, tinted lenses and plain ones, what would he look like without them? Well, here he is. And this is an artist's impression. Unusually for an armed robber, he's in his fifties. He's short at five foot six, stocky with a ruddy complexion and a quiet voice. But his manner has become more menacing. He apologised at first for pointing guns at terrified cashiers. Now, increasingly, he's angry. I don't think anybody can appreciate what it does feel like to stand there and have this, this person threatening violence towards you, the anger, the trauma, just, just every different emotion that you go through. I know that I wasn't hurt physically, but I think mentally 
it, it does leave its mark, perhaps forever. His attacks are now almost monthly, and if he fails in one place, he tries another. Why does he need such regular cash? Does he gamble? Has he been made redundant or gone bankrupt? Is he pretending to someone that he hasn't lost his job? And if so, where is he whiling away the hours? Why are his attacks almost always on Mondays to Thursdays and between four and five in the evening, just before closing time? And why were there no attacks between last August and October? Was he on holiday or ill? And is this an innocent customer or could this be him casing a building society in Shrewsbury two months ago? If that is you, or if you can help in any way, please do call. There's a £20,000 reward. But the real prize for catching him, of course, is stopping him. He's leaving behind a terrible trail of upset and misery. And if his gun is real, someone is going to get hurt. 0500 600 600, or call the local police on 01 785 234 952. That's Stafford 234 952. Now we want some help to find an officer of the law. In fact, he's a solicitor whom we'd like to speak to about some missing money. Last December, Alistair Malcolm Forrest Little was d due to travel from Inverness to Edinburgh for an appointment with the Law Society. We know he got on the train, but he failed to keep the appointment. It's thought he's still somewhere in Britain, but where? He's 40, tall at six foot two, heavily built with red hair. If you see him, you'll do his family and his clients a good turn by calling in. 0500 600 600 or you can call the local police on 01343 543101. That's Elgin 543101. Not long ago, someone stole a credit card from a worker at an engineering company in Norfolk. And soon afterwards, this man appeared with it at a jeweller's in Norwich. Who is he? He looked at expensive watches and eventually bought a stainless steel gents Rolex worth almost £2,000. Now, police on the lookout for him. If you can tell us who he is and where he is, please call us right away, 0500 600 600. Or you can call the incident room direct on 01603 768 769. That's Norwich. 768769. Well, let's tell you a bit more about results since last month. On the highway robbery near Plumpton Races, four people were identified. Police are delighted and they say they're now very confident. And on the hijack of the post office van in Surrey, a car that seemed important has been eliminated. A viewer called in to say the robber in the gap top was related to someone he knew. So if you made that call, you obviously wanted to help. Will you please ring again with just a little bit more detail? 0500 600 600 here to the studio. That's 0500 600 600. And an important result, but a very curious one for Crime Watch. In a very unusual sequence of events, there's been a crucial arrest, not because of viewers' calls, but because of the Crime Watch team themselves. While making a reconstruction, our researcher and director spotted a hidden clue which led detectives to point their inquiry in a new direction. Two women had been raped in separate incidents in South London, and the crimes had prompted a huge response and provoked a great deal of emotion. A man has now been charged. Next, the city of Dreaming Spires, the university town of Oxford. It's a picturesque place, surrounded by medieval colleges. One Monday morning two months ago, shops were opening in High Street and Corn Market Street, and in the road between them, Turl Street. We are extremely well known in Oxford and obviously in the county. We do deal with the more expensive items of jewellery. We pride ourselves in being good at our job. The type of customers we normally receive are ones known to us and made up of the generations of many families. A few hundred yards away, a sky-blue Vauxhall Belmont had been parked up overnight. I was coming along Merton Street, um, checking the pay and display tickets, and I noticed this vehicle had one from the previous evening, so I logged it, as is usual. I came back about half an hour later, noticed that the car still hadn't got another pay and display ticket, so I issued it with a parking ticket of my own. Around the same time, another blue Vauxhall, an Astra, drew attention to itself not far away. How nice it is there, Mally? When I saw the vehicle weaving around, my reaction was to look to see what the hell the driver was up to. 
I got to the gap in Broad Street to enable me to turn right into Turl Street. The Astra is coming back towards me at this stage. My reaction was, this fella is certainly lost. He doesn't seem to know where he's going. As the witness turned off into Market Street, the Astra went on into Turl Street. About an hour later... Finished it. Really? Yeah, at last. Fantastic. They even ran out of blue paint and had to go back to the store and get some. Well, better get this paperwork done. Yes, here we go. There was no real reason to doubt the customer at the door. His dress was very presentable. He looked very tidy, as most of our customers do. Get down! Get down! It took a couple of moments for me to realise what exactly was happening. My reaction was, I Get must up. keep calm. Get up! Get the windows open. Open the windows. Because of the noise, other Get staff realised what was going on. I didn't know whether to come out or not, because, you know, I could see the guns, and I just generally thought, well, they might panic and start shooting or something. So I pressed the panic button, hoping the police would arrive quickly. Come on! Get the windows open! Come on! Come on! He pistol whipped me. There was lots of aggression. These guys were really keyed up to do the job. I was relieved that I was the only person there. It's a robbery. They've got a gun on Adam. Call the police. It. It's a robbery. There's a robbery in Turner Street. Get over there. Stay there. After I'd pressed the panic alarm, the emotions were really running rapid by then. And uh, it was at that point when I knew that if I had pushed it any further, that uh, as far as getting a, another pistol whipping, something else even more devastating could have um, occurred. Come on, come on, he's here! The guy nearest to me he was getting extremely agitated because their time had run out and their car was waiting for them. Get back! I wasn't going to give up just yet. The Astra was abandoned nearby in Merton Street, where the Belmont had been parked, and the Belmont was seen being abandoned again close by in Woodbine Place, near Oxford Railway Station. And here's where you can help. First, there's the driver. If you can link this man with these events, please let us know. He's 25 to 30, with a day's stubble, and wearing a dark Nike cap. And can you help eliminate these two? They were walking past the jewellers an hour before the raid, and around the same time, the witness in the van saw an Astra drive into Turl Street. Was this Astra used as a getaway, or could it have been you just lost in Oxford City Centre at about 8.20 a.m. on Monday the 18th of May? The rear passenger was leaning forward as if in conversation with the other two. He was bald and in his late 20s or early 30s. As for the Astra involved in the attack, we know it had been stolen overnight, the day before the robbery, from Banbury, 20 miles north of Oxford. And the Vauxhall Belmont was stolen on the Saturday night, the 16th of May, in Newbury. A dark-coloured VW Golf was seen in King Edward Street at the same time of the robbery, and curiously, the driver was wearing surgical gloves. We think the registration started H175. Incidentally, there is a £10,000 reward. Now, can you spot the stolen jewellery? Many, many of the pieces had distinctive engraving, either Raoul, FEU or C&F on it. So call us in the studio or ring the incident room, if you prefer, on 01296 396 333. That's Aylesbury 396 treble 3. Now, two months ago, a 14-year-old girl was raped on Holbeck Moor in Leeds. As part of their inquiries, detectives are trying to find this man, Joseph or Jojo Maloney. He's a traveller with connections in Glasgow, Manchester and the Irish Republic. He's in his mid-twenties, five foot ten and a bit heavier than in this picture, which is four years old. If you know where Jojo Maloney is, do try to help. 0500 600 600 or call the local police on 0500 040 999. That's a free call number 
0500 040 999. And another unpleasant crime. Two men abducted at gunpoint in the West End of London in what seems to have been a feud. The victims managed to escape and detectives are now trying to trace two men. First, Ian Ronald Tucker, six foot two, fit with short fair hair and known to have friends in the Gravesend area of Kent. Then Mark Christopher O'Connell, five foot ten, stocky and with connections around North Holt, West London. A third man may also be able to help. He's Suki Matu, a businessman and a very distinctive one at that. He's in excess of 25 stone, possibly Indian or Pakistani, with offices in East London. If you've seen him or Messrs Tucker or O'Connell, do give us a ring 0500 600 600 or try 0171 321 9340. That's 0171 321 9340. In previous generations, people knew their neighbours and strangers were looked on with suspicion, but now we've replaced twitching net curtains with closed-circuit TV cameras. Someone who commits a crime in the most unlikely location can still be picked out because of surveillance cameras many miles away. This next crime is on an unlikely target, and the crime itself is improbable. The weekend before Christmas and a robbery on a place that rarely has any money on the premises. Billy? I just come to pick up a rabbit. Come in. Okay, we've got kids. Come on in. Like your hat. As I unlocked the door, there was another man. The way he was looking in looked like he was looking for someone, and he sort of waved me off and walked away. Here's Billy, or better. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, Come on in, kids. Okay. Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas. Hello. So I just like the working with the animals. They only love you and they come to you and they rely on you. And some of them come in, you know, on death's door and end up going home fine. Hello? Has a lady brought a stroke dog in? No. There was a stray dog under the bridge and um, my girlfriend was going to bring it in. Is it okay if I come in and wait or should I wait out here? Come in. Right. It's very calm, we were talking. He just seemed normal. Will you be able to treat it? Yeah, I should think so. When your girlfriend brings it in. Yeah, all right. I'll go and see where she is. Okay. Oh, I'll let you out. She's got the dog. She'll be down in a minute. Right. Lock the door. What? Lock the door. Where'd you keep the money? It was very sudden the way he changed. I got butterflies all in my stomach and I just panicked. And I just tried to do what he wanted me to do. I hoped he would go away soon. Get me a bag for this. What's this? You lied to me. I thought you said the vet took the money. I didn't he never raised his voice at any time, but he was angry because I hadn't told him it was there. I was a bit worried about what he would do then. Give me the keys. <laughs> he was out of the building and I locked the door and he'd, he'd gone. I felt a bit safer than that. I'd, he was actually locked out. It was almost certainly the same man who walked around the corner to a taxi rank. I feel angry in a way that he could do that, and so close to Christmas. Just the fact that he could he could come in and terrify me like that, and I mean, just make me wary of people all the time. And I used to be really trustworthy of everyone. How long to get to Weybridge? Well, depending on the traffic, about 15 minutes in all. I need a fag. Sorry, mate, I don't smoke. No problem, though. There's a garage coming up on the way. I don't mind stopping. How much for me to Southern? Well, it's a pound a mile. No, just take me to Weybridge. Just pull over there. He asked to park in the unlit area of the car wash. But I was a bit suspicious. He might do a runner. 
So I parked my car outside the shop. Inside the shop, the man bought chocolate and 10 Benson and Hedges cigarettes. He was strong and looked fit, 25 to 30 years old, about five foot five. He was clean shaven and had black, short, shaved hair. Is there a station here? Yes, West Byfleet. Drop me for then. Oh, I've just missed the turning now. I've got to just take me to Weybridge, all right? Right. As I drove down the slip road, the man rolled up his jacket and placed it inside his shopping bag. Yeah, mate. Thank you. This is Weybridge Station, just before 10 to 5. He may have had only a brief wait, because the next train from here to London was the 4.55 to Waterloo. Were you on a late afternoon journey between Weybridge and London five days before Christmas? And did you see where he went? The bag taken by the robber was pretty unusual. It has this logo with Hill's Scientific Diet on it. If you come across a white bag with this red logo on it, particularly in the area of the South East, do give us a ring. And if you recognize this man, and incidentally, he changed his clothes in the taxi. So if you saw him, or if you can help in any other way, 0500 600 600, or call the local police on 01483 761 991. That's Woking 761 991. Well, as we hope, the phones have been busy yet again this evening. 93 calls on the Aylesbury kidnap, 29 offering names, uh, and the same name has been mentioned twice. But no more calls, please, on suggesting the van is a BT van. We've had a lot of calls so far on that. Um, four calls on the South London drug dealer, two names mentioned. 24 calls, 12 names on the Dewsbury rape, and uh, the Kingsbury gold burglary, five calls on that as well. Now, our lines are open until midnight, and you'll see other numbers in a moment. They're also listed on CFAX on page 617. And and if you have any information on any crime, try Crime Stoppers. You can call anonymously if you want on 0800 treble 5 treble 1. If you've been the victim of a crime and you'd like to talk to someone for support, ring Victim Support Line on 0845 30 30 900. Their lines are open from 9am to 9pm on weekdays and from 9am to 7pm at weekends and calls are charged at local rates. Other helplines are listed on our CFAX, page 617. Now we'll have more news in Crime Watch update at 11 o'clock and remember the date for Crime Watch next month is Tuesday, August the 11th. Crime Watch now reaches parts that no crime appeals have ever reached before. If you're on the internet, check out the Crime Watch site. It features all tonight's appeals and more. In fact, I can already report our first success via the net. A man wanted in the UK has been spotted on our Crime Watch site by Dutch police. Now, you'll also find uh, background details on all our cases. You'll find details of stolen property, missing people, some of whom have uh, disappeared in sus suspicious circumstances. There are also all sorts of tips on crime prevention and inside facts about the programme information about uh, me, Jill, the other presenters and everyone concerned with making Crime Watch. You'll find all this on the World Wide Web, www.bbc.co.uk slash Crime Watch. And you can email us at crimewatchuk at the BBC. That's cwuk at bbc.co.uk. From now on, any criminal on Crime Watch will be featured all around the globe. So, unless we're seeking you, don't have nightmares. Sleep well. Good night. Good night. Thank you very much.